And our final speaker on the tech track today, we've got Katya Allison from Grin. Katya is an experienced marketer with a background in communications, digital marketing, content development, and influencer strategy, very diverse. She spent time as a COO of a digital marketing agency and cut her teeth in the corporate world as a business communications manager in her current role as director of content at Grin and host of the Grin Gets Real podcast. She strives to answer the questions that keep marketers up at night by conducting engaging expert interviews or producing content that provides actionable insights and tips. A lot of buzzwords in there, so I'm happy to introduce <laughs> I'm uh, in marketing, what can I say? I'm <laughs> um, no, it's, thank you so much for being here today. Your topic today, a winning bow tie funnel marketing strategy, leveraging creators uh, for any e-commerce brand. Um, really appreciate you being here on stage. You also have a giveaway today, which is 50% off onboarding, a $1,250 value and the first month free. And again, we'll have Michaela drop the link in the chat throughout the course of this presentation. Katya, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. A little stressed about my share screen, but luckily that's like the biggest stressor um, that I've got here. I'm excited to just kind of talk about the bow tie funnel and I've got a lot of content to go through. Fantastic. Well, we'll keep it a low stress Wednesday here on day one of DTC X3. Uh, I'm going to let you share your screen here and uh, I will hop off stage, be back in a few for some Q&A at the end. Okay, let's see. Let's make sure that this happens. All right. Can you guys see my screen? I don't know why I'm doing a thumbs up. You guys can obviously <laughs> not see the thumbs up. <laughs> I'll can give you the you... thumbs up on my side here. Yeah, we, we can see okay, it. Okay, perfect. Okay. Now, now I'm officially gone. Now I'm officially now, gone. Now I know. See you later. See you later. <laughs> well, everybody who is here, welcome to a winning bow tie funnel marketing strategy, leveraging creators. On the agenda today, what I have is a review of just kind of why creators, how those creators can fit into your overall marketing strategy, and a breakdown of the bow tie funnel with a tie to how you can leverage those creators of yours and a bow tie, not a knot. Uh, the pun was intended. It's tough for these virtual events. So um, I am here to also entertain myself. So why do creators work? 88% uh, of consumers trust online recommendations as much as personal recommendations. It's basically social proof. Uh, in science talk, it's called the normative social influence. That's a tongue twister for me. But what it's basically saying is that you're getting third party influence, right? Proof that it works. You've got street credit. Creators have essentially been there, done that. Not only social proof, but creators don't have to worry about ad blocking. You can deploy many of them at once and you will always, always get brand awareness, content, community, and revenue. And on that last note, how much you get of each of those depends on what your strategy is, which is why I've gathered you all here today. Um, now, here's some proof in the pudding that can be seen in the customers that we help support with our creator management, uh, creator management platform. The top five benefits customers experience leveraging creators as their marketing strategy is brand awareness, is content production, social media presence growth, sales growth. Yup, there's the revenue behind it. And also brand community. And 86% of Grin customers surveyed found that leveraging creators is an effective strategy. So let's talk strategy, right? Okay. So I want you guys to take a moment to think of all of the things that you're doing as marketers, CEOs, owners, VPs of marketing, social media managers, or whatever marketing role you are currently in. How many of initiatives are part of your overall marketing strategy? Assuming if you're taking a look at the slide that I bet most of you have some, if not all of these things at play in your overall marketing strategy. The one thing that ties them together or that can tie them together from a strategic standpoint is creators. And when you leverage them as part of your marketing strategy, you create a full funnel approach with creators. Now, here's an example of how it can work. Let's take a product launch scenario, for example. Uh, so imagine this, you guys are either in a group Zoom, unless you are now no longer working from home and you are 
at a literal table and you've got a product launch. What you guys are strategizing is, okay, we're going to do these paid social efforts. We need to get this on our website. We need to post it on our social media channels, share it with our customers and prospects in an email. And wouldn't it be great if we could have some reviews as well? Now, without creators, you have multiple people on your team who are creating, executing, and managing. Now, I'm not saying that creators are going to get rid of that because or else we would all be out of a job. But what I'm asking you guys to do is basically open up your minds and put creators in this particular space. If creators are part of your strategy, you're working smarter, not harder. So those creators are putting together the posts you have on social, and then you can identify the top performing influencer and the top performing content and use that for your paid social ads, right? And that's going to lower your cost per click, your cost per acquisition. You can also use those images as the product images on your website. You can introduce your product in an email with a picture and a review. And you can also bring your customers in to help you launch that product. They already love you and are an easy pool of creators at your fingertips. So what's your return on investment in dollars when it comes to something that you can leverage across your entire marketing strategy, as well as the time that it gives back your team so that they can spend more time being strategic? All right, let's talk about Ty Funnel. Uh, what is the bow tie funnel? The bow tie funnel is basically the traditional funnel flipped on its side, uh, literally. Okay. <laughs> so thinking, but it's also thinking beyond just acquiring new customers. There's the conversion optimization side, which is also known as getting new customers. And then there's that, com there is the customer retention optimization, which is basically keeping those comfort customers. Wow, I'm getting tongue-tied here. Why is it important to literally tip that funnel on its side? Because as marketers, we spend a lot of time getting those customers. We should spend just as much time keeping them. And to drive this story home even further, customers are four times more likely to refer new customers. Five, it costs five times more to acquire new customers versus keeping existing ones. And those new customers are seven times more likely to try something new that you're offering. I'm going to step off of my soapbox. We'll get back to the funnel. Okay. So what we basically have here is on the left-hand side, we have the conversion optimization. This is where the relationship begins with uh, with what we're hoping for is a lifetime customer, right? This is essentially where we introduce ourselves to our customers, share our brand story and get them to trust us enough to make the purchase of the product or the service. The next side is the customer retention side. This is when they've bought into the family and are now a customer where a whole other marketing strategy begins to keep them happy. And it all starts with a brand story. A good brand story can strengthen and increase your audience by creating an emotional connection with your customer. It gives brands the opportunity to share their why. Why should I buy from you? Why should I care? Why now? A story is an easy and thoughtful way to simplify your information while connecting with someone emotionally. But why do emotions even matter, right? Because when you're customers are connected to you, they purchase. And if you nurture that relationship, they stay loyal. And let's be real. Now more than ever, this is a buyer's market. A consumer has a choice to choose whoever that they want. And the ownership is on the brand to really stand out. So let creators be your brand storytellers. The key elements of a good story, and I want you to think of any good movie you've ever seen or good book you've ever read, there's always a character, a conflict, like the common enemy, and a conclusion resolution. What I'm talking about here is your characters are your creators. The conflict, the common enemy, are those identified pain points and the conclusion resolution is your product and your service. So how do you leverage creators for this entire bow tie funnel? Let's start with the conversion optimization side, right? This is the part where everyone feels pretty comfortable as far as marketing. I won't go down to like all of the nitty gritty, but I will bundle some of these up. Uh, there's a track nurture and consideration. 
Now, how do we execute this with creators? Let's bunch up the attract and nurture because I think that's very much more top of the funnel. This is where you um, introduce your brand via creators. What type of content are you looking for those creators to put together? And what type of content you're looking for are ones that say, well, hello, nice to meet you. Um, it's time to get to know you. What does this product or service look like in real life? Tell me about you without telling me about you. I want you guys to think of Instagram stories, TikTok videos, and YouTube shorts here. The key points for your creators here is sharing the who you are. They're making the introduction to their community. Product seating is a great way to do this. I am sure that I'm going to receive some comments about it, but I promise that there is a method to the madness when I say that. The next step is obviously consideration. So with consideration, this is where you're going to educate them on how you solve those pain points, that common enemy that I was talking about, the common enemy that the creators and the consumers have. This is your time to shine, but it's not about you. It's about them. Tell them more about tell them more than just the obvious. What I mean by that is don't have your creators just post a picture of what your product looks like, the packaging. You want to share multiple stories about your products. In this area, I want you to think of the content or what you're asking your creators to do is um, put together reviews, unboxing, lifestyle application videos, uh, and pictures and words. Those are your reviews, right? Have them share those pain points and how you've solved them. The key points here for your creators is to share the how, the what, and the why. Now that final stage is the sweet spot for all of us marketers, right? This is the end goal for us sometimes is to get them to convert. This is when they go from looking to buying or taking some sort of action. Make it easy for them to purchase or learn more. This is where those discount codes or promo codes and affiliate links live. And this is also where your creator can introduce a little bit of FOMO, that fear of missing out if they don't take action now. It's really important to keep in mind that this is the customer story and the creator is their friend. For the both of them, you're merely a guide, a Yoda, if you will, to the solution of their pain points. Let's go to the other side of it. What happens after happily ever after? Now, this is for any Gen Xers that are in the crowd. This is when customers find out what happens when people stop being polite and start getting real. Uh, it's not really as dramatic as a reality TV series, but it is reality, right? Like what, where, what is in customer retention optimization, again, a tongue tie, is like adopt a loyalist. That is an advocate. That's a brand ambassador. Now, how do we execute this? entire funnel with creators. Let's look at adopt. So here a customer has purchased. Now what? You're out of the friend zone and now you're dating. That might sound a little bit trite, but take a moment to think about it. Starting a relationship with a customer is still starting a relationship. This is a time when your customer will make that decision on how they feel about what they've purchased. From a creator's standpoint, think of the how-to videos that you want from them, right? How can they leverage your product to, um, you know, adapt it to what it looks like in their life? I want you to think of like the frequently asked questions someone gets once they receive your product or they've um, started your service. The next step is loyalist. Now here, these are the people that basically they use your product or service on the regular. They've even started to try other products that they didn't initially know about. You've been here dating a while, if you will. Um, think about, do you have a standing Saturday date or have you moved out of your snaps and into the text? I'm not really sure if I said that right. So please, someone correct me if I'm wrong. Right here, I want you guys to think of those hack videos or those posts. Think about the reviews again. While it's really obvious to ask for reviews um, when you initially get a, a product in the hands of a customer, it's great to ask for a review after they've tried to use your product or service in a given time frame. Ask your creators to put those reviews so that they can further tell your brand's story. That next step is an advocate. Now, 
this advocate is a frequent purchaser. They've not only continued to purchase their original purchase, but they've started to take part in like those refer a friend emails that you've been sending out. Watch out. Guess what this stage is in a relationship? You're ready to introduce them to your parents. Have your creators promote the refer a friend or maybe a rewards program or a newsletter. This is also where your creator can promote additional products that go well with the original purchase or maybe even introduce them to something that they weren't even aware of. In this stage with your creator, you're creating another brand story, right? You're continuing the brand storytelling. Think character, conflict, resolution. Now just you're doing it with your other products while they're still singing your praises. This is where you need to think of your creators beyond just posts and is an area where a lot of people miss out. At this point, your creators are so invested in your brand as well, and they're part of your team. They can provide you some amazing product feedback. They're in touch with your community that is now your community. I'm, they're in touch with their community that is now your community. That's what I meant to say. And are better equipped to honestly share with you valuable information that can help improve your products or even really tweak your messaging. Now that last stage is that brand ambassador stage. This is someone who is actively engaged with you and, and purchases. They are talking about you without you having them talk about you. And you've built enough brand equity in their lives that it would really take a natural disaster for them to leave you. What stage in the relationship is this? You guessed it. You're bringing them home for the holidays. So for this, this is like the pinnacle. Have your creators share how they, the customers, can be part of this brand family that you've created. This is also where creators and consumers kind of collide and they become one. One of the most challenging things or aspects of uh, running an influencer marketing program is really finding that right creator. If you have customers or even just loyalists, you can start to introduce them to your creator program. This is a great hack and a great way for you to scale your program and to maximize your efforts. Now, the key to leveraging creators is to build a brand that lasts, including that lasts is including creators as part of your overall marketing strategy. It's how you'll find the right creators. It's how you will maximize the ROI, calculate ROAS and how you create that halo effect for your brand. And that halo effect is when you've built enough brand equity that your brand is strong and brand loyalty is achieved. Creators are a really great way to build that and that's made stronger when they are part of your overall marketing strategy. I think on that note, maybe I take a bow or should I take some questions? You can, you can do both if you feel so inclined. Um... I know. It loses its effect because I'm not standing. Well, it's all good. It's all we get that. We get that. <laughs> um, I think I took away the one liner out of the snaps and into the text. So I actually wrote that down. I'm going to quote that. Did back. I say it right? <laughs> yeah, I, I think you said it perfectly. That's exactly what we wanted to hear on our side of things. Um, so I do have a question for you in the chat. We asked this during the last presentation as well, um, but you can probably lend some really good context here. Uh, how do brands find the right creator? Like, how do they curate that appropriately to find the right individual, the right group of individuals in order to go out there and promote their product? Um, well, this is a really long, long it's going to be, it's a longer answer. I'm going to try and be brief. The key to this is really, and I apologize. Now the dogs are barking. They're into it. They've got opinions on how to find the right creator as well, too. It really is going to take time. As a brand, what you have to do is you have to, write down the questions that you want to make sure are part of characteristics and attributes that your creator has. Um, I think that a lot of people, what they do is they search, uh, they go on a blind search before they start close to home. So I would say if you're looking at it as like concentric rings, that first ring is um, go to family, friends, and people who are already purchasing. Those are the people that are going to say yes. Those are also the people that are going to say yes to product seeding as well too. They want the gift because they've already bought into it. That next step are those people who are talking about you on social, like the social listening, right? Follow your, you know, follow your mentions, all of your hashtags. That's like that next big group that is going to get the yes. Um, after that, it's also taking a look at like searching what type of creators that you're looking for, right? So go close to home and then like create your rings after that. 
I'm hoping mm-hmm. that makes a little bit of sense. Okay. I also have no, a absolutely. as well too. You also have some, what, sorry? I said, I have checklists that can help as oh, well. Oh, yeah, uh, perfect. I, I think we spoke at the same time. It cut out on my side. Um, no, that no, that's a very valuable answer. Um, and maybe I can I just round out with one question here. You made a lot of good points with respect to, um, you know, conversion optimization and then customer retention. What what do you see brands? What is the single most thing brands miss out on? You know, within that process that they should really spend a lot of time focusing on uh, to make sure that they don't you know fault on either one of those two strategies. You know, converting or you know retaining customers. I think it's really taking the time to find that right influencer. And not only are you identifying the right influencer, but it's taking the time to develop the relationship with that influencer. You have to think of them as part of your team. They want to be as part of your team. It's going to help you with like your budget and negotiations with your influencers. And Mm -hmm. I think that there is definitely a time and a place for like a quantity of quantity or like an army of influencers, if you will, you kind of have to think of like, what is it that you want to achieve in your overall objective? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. No, that makes a ton of sense. Uh, Katya, how can people get in touch with you after this uh, session? Uh, They can email me at katya at grin.co. That is K-A-T-Y-A at grin.co. Leave off the M. So there's not a comma. Or you can also reach out to me on LinkedIn. It's I am under Katya Allison. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Katya. And just as a reminder to the crowd here today, Michaela dropped the link in uh, the chat earlier in this talk. Um, there's an offer from Grin. It's 50% off onboarding, which is a $1,250 value uh, plus the first month free. So you can click the link and you can claim that offer. It looks like it's getting some emoji reactions in the chat. So that's good news. Um, Katya, thank you so much for joining us here on DDCX thank number you. three. Really appreciate your time and uh, some very valuable information. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Awesome. Uh, So that rounds out day one on the tech track, guys. Um, I just want to send out a couple of reminders. Uh, First and foremost, we've actually got a a special DDCX comedy show that's taking place on the brand track. So I'm on the tech track right now. That's on the other track. You can make your way over there if you want to check out the comedy show. Uh, We also have three happy hours uh, tonight and tomorrow. We've got an LA event. We've got a New York event. And we've got a Toronto event, which I will be attending uh, tomorrow night. Those links uh, are for brand attendance. So if you're a brand, you know, we're opening up attendance there. You can find those on our homepage. Uh, We also, as a reminder, are accepting donations to Ukraine. If you go to the general chat on the chat, you'll see the link to to donate to UNICEF uh, to help support Ukrainian efforts. Um, And there's also networking tables uh, that you can find at the top in the lobby. So feel free to join those networking tables and interact with some people over there. Um, And we also have booths for our tech sponsors. So a lot of options uh, post event here at DDCX day one. Uh, Just as a reminder, we do have day two that takes place tomorrow. There's a full day of events on different tracks. Please join us. Uh, It's a phenomenal event. We've had so many good speakers on day one. We're bound to have so many good speakers on day two. Um, But as for me, that is it. I am rounding out my hosting responsibilities here on DDCX day one. Really appreciate everybody that tuned in live. And for those that can tune in live, you will, of course, get these recordings, you know, on YouTube and otherwise. Thank you so much. Uh, Have a great rest of your night. And hopefully you can join the comedy session on the brand track. Take care.